It looks really easy. Take a special Lego brand kit and make a functioning robot out of it. Well, it's not that easy, as Michael Harding finds out at the 8th Annual Robotic Challenge. We're here at Golf Hall for the 8th Annual Oxford Imitational Robotics Competition. 20 plus school teams from all across the Thames Valley are here to actually do a competition. They're always deceptively simple. Like last year, the competition was putting a washer and a nut on a bolt. That's all they had to do and repeat it six times. This year, they have to recognize these colors, yellow and red and green, and put a wavy line on them, a zigzag line, and a straight line. Come on, let's meet the team behind this competition. Ian, what do you uh, see in these kinds of competitions from a business perspective? Well, what I see is the future of our business. We've got a bunch of kids that are working really hard in teams. They're uh, doing project management, they're doing computer software development, and uh, you know, imagining solutions to problems. And that's what we need in our future uh, employees and, and to keep our businesses going. Well, thanks for the sponsorship. I think now is the time to meet the team behind the actual competition, the deceptively simple competition that's driving, I think, some of these teams a little bonkers. Come, introduce yourself, team. Oh, I'm uh, Will Van Vliet. I am on the tech committee. All right, and where did you get this idea from? Uh, we took this idea here from uh, the local industry. There's a, a, a huge demand for robotic welders, um, Cami, uh, Toyota, and much more. Um, they are used, uh, they distinguish uh, codes of metal products, and according to the codes, they weld a certain pattern on it. So what are you, what are you expecting these teams to do with these three colors? Uh, basically, we are, they are required to, uh, the robot is required to read the color of the stick and draw a line which represents a weld accordingly to the color of the stick. So, the wiggly line goes on what color? The wiggly line goes on the red one. And uh, is this is a test for you. The straight line goes on? The yellow. And what goes on the green one? Zigzag. The zigzag, all replicating well. That's right. All right, how long did it take you to dream this up? Um, well, uh, the tech committee is a team. Uh, we met together a couple times, and uh, it was one of the ideas that came up, so it was a good idea and we uh, developed the challenge with it. So here's the other uh, co-chair of the team, Ian Highcoop. Ian, what's, uh, what's the most important thing that these teams will learn this evening? Um, probably the most important thing they're, they're going to learn is, is uh, how a machine really works. Uh, it seems like they're just playing with Lego and doing something that's completely unrelated to the real world. But as Will can attest to uh, being a plant operator, uh, the parts that they're working with are very similar to what he's working with every day out in the real world. And this experience, uh, I guess working with the, the, the very real scenario uh, of what a machine is, is going to teach them all about the other characteristics that involve building machines, and that's teamwork and planning and trial and error and uh, the importance of technical ability and working as a team and all those other things that uh, are important out in the real world when, you're, when you actually get on the ground. How important are mentors to the process? Uh, mentors are, are, are very valuable to the team because it enables them to uh, kind of predict concepts that will work and not work so well uh, based on their experience out in the field. But more importantly, uh, the mentorship piece of this challenge connects uh, the local industry and local professionals to the students uh, who then get a window out into the real world and the kinds of career opportunities that are available to them down the road and sometimes make even uh, actual connections that lead to real life uh, job opportunities. Super. Let's go meet a real world mentor. Come on. And you mentored Plattsville last year. Correct. Right. Yeah, what is it, mm -hmm. what, why is it good for you as a person? Well, for me as a person, uh, being in the industry itself, it, it really helps to kind of broaden the, uh, the scope of the kids these days. Uh, there's a real huge uh, issue in the industry because of the baby boomers are going to be retiring, right? So there's going to be a huge void in the industry. So if we develop a mindset at an early enough age, then hopefully they'll go into that uh, uh, field and be able to become successful in it. It's all about the passion. What did you contribute to this team? So basically the, the main thing that I contributed to here is the mindset that it is okay to fail. Failure is not a negative thing. Uh, basically, use what you've learned from the failure and use that to develop a much better you know, product in the end. The Life Christian Academy 
this year called Pure NRG. Their team was last year's Platinum Award winners. This year, let's meet the team and find out what they're doing differently this year. Your first name? Maria. Emily. Trina. Solis. Sarah. Do you think you have a competitive advantage that you're all females? Possibly, yeah. We yeah. do. Our robot is the most, well, we think the most simple. A lot of the guy teams have really complex, big built up robots. Well, we've just kept it simple and it does the requirements and we're happy with it. Yes, and so uh, what did you learn about this process? Um, a lot of teamwork and problem solving skills, working out um, different problems and stuff. And you were on last year's team? Yes. All right, yes. so you brought that experience forward. Do you feel like a winner? Uh, yes. Yeah. Go ahead. And what did you learn about this process? Um, well, about like how, how to build stuff and teamwork and yeah. Who did the programming? I did. Yeah, but what did you learn? How did you find the programming? Um, it was difficult, but we got through it and it, it was fun. It was so it's, it's a little more than just programming. It's also about engineering, things that fit together. Yeah. What did you bring to the process? Um, I helped with the building and um, some of the... Um, measurements and stuff. Mm -hmm. Yes. Part of the engineering side? Um, sort of. Yeah. It's always sort of with this game, isn't yeah. it? This competition. What did you learn? Um, <laughs> building and like boards and a bit of programming and measurements and yeah, like teamwork and everything. Like that. Now it's time for a brief interview with the judges who are going around these rooms evaluating the presentations you see. And they bring with them a really unique pedigree. And speaking of unique, why don't you tell us who you are and what you do? Uh, Mark Harrison, I'm a regional program manager with the Ministry of Training Colleges and Universities. So this is an important project for you? It is important for us because it really is about uh, attracting the youth to technology. Mm -hmm. And uh, who are you? Uh, I'm Joel Van Bynen. I am the Lab Operations Manager for Faculty of Technology at Fanshawe College. And what interests you about this event? Well, first of all, the innovation that you see from the youth in the room is incredible. You, uh, you see a lot of drive and interest from students, and uh, I think that's what's going to lead us into the future as far as our manufacturing capabilities go, as well as all the other innovative things, um, uh, research for example. We can have these students discover a lot of new and important things. Fanshawe has always been involved since the very earliest times in this competition. What's in it for Fanshawe? Uh, we're delighted to be founding members. As a community college, what we value is hands-on learning. It's practical applications of learning. We're a, a college of applied arts and technology, and this is the way of the future. So we want to support younger students and helping them move up towards a practical college career and uh, something in technology that, that uh, suits them. And fun, of course. Of course. <laughs> of course. <laughs> we even have cake here, did you know? Get yourself some cake. Know. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's the point, isn't it? That these, we're looking at the future based from these young people's eyes. For Oxford County Living, I'm Mike Harding. Thanks so much, Mike. The award winners of this year's challenge were Life Christian Academy of Woodstock, they were last year's Platinum Award recipient, and Westminster Secondary School from London. A total of 21 teams took part in this year's challenge.